Alright, Brock Thea Howl, Brock Thea Oshai, Brock Thea Howl. Brock Thea Oshai, Brock Thea Howl, Brock Thea Howl, Bashim Yahushai, Pahashim, Rakak with Dash, the blindness of the apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone, which you well. Salutations to the hopeful elect out there, you Akim, to Sadakim, that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity. I'm the preacher, Mana. I'm coming at you with the GMS to the point. Um, the title of this lesson is going to be entitled to the Shakespearean brothers, quote unquote, as the apostle Elder Tahar would call them. And uh, just breaking out Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2. Um, of course, um, um, well, brothers might not know this, but, you know, if you're watching the live streams and even after camp, Apostle Tahar stresses, um, you know, we don't have to um, use, um, you know, words that are hard to interpret. But, and, and you know, the super <laughs> PhD words, as he would say. Um, but you do have brothers that do like to um, expand the English uh, language and, voca and and put a lot of vocabulary in their lessons. A prime example is uh, Apostle Elder Gabar, and you have brothers that do speak with a Shakespearean sense, as um, the elder brother Barack Gabar, uh, as Elder Gattles pointed out. So um, I think I figured I'll put this lesson together because I was studying the Kaino Greek and watching a few lessons on it, and the same thing is pretty much evident today. Uh, the word kino um, just mean common. Actually, let me let me see if I could jump to the picture I have here on the bottom. This is a snapshot from uh, a video, you know, interpreting ancient Greek. With um, interpreting ancient Greek, it can if you interpret it basically, can you speak modern Greek or could the modern Greek person understand ancient Greek? And what they were bringing out was the fact that you didn't just have the kino Greek, which is what the bulk of the New Testament is written in, but you had um, archaic and classical Greek with their many different dialects, and that's what's so important. Dialects such as um, Attic, Doric, Ionic, and Aeolic, among others, are ancient Greek as well as Kino Greek, the common language of the Byzantine Empire. Kino is a Greek ancient word that just means common, the common language, and um, primarily all the Gospels were written in a common Greek, except for the works of Luke, uh, which Luke is accredited with the gospel of luke in the book of acts it's a lot more harder to interpret for modern scholars because it's 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 written it's like it's written in classical greek because when, when you would understand it, you understand that uh luke was uh, um he was like a learned brother you know he was learned uh, physician uh he had he spoke well uh greek classical greek if you if you if you uh for better for lack of a better word but you know the brothers and the, the gospels you got to remember that you know the scriptures say that they weren't learned men um they were just speaking the common kino greek which the kino greek comes from the fact that as the hellenization was happening you had different uh greek soldiers bringing their own dialect like try to in today's time picture um you know the united states colonizer and you hear somebody speak like myself from new york or a brother from the south with his way of speaking or a brother from uh, the Midwest in his dialect of English and the different um, slangs that come with it. Certain brothers might say breaking bread. Some brothers might say get that chicken. Um, um, some brothers might be like, for example, I might say I ain't with it. Now, English, you know, pr proper English would be like, no, I'm not going to do that. Or, I, I, you know, I'm opposed to that. Something like that. Something to that effect just to have you brothers get a understanding of what I'm saying. But there was a broader um common dialect which was called a kino greek it didn't take much to learn it was very easy it was the greek that you would hear in the marketplaces of you if, if you will you know what i'm saying and that's pretty much what most brothers speak today you know we come in um a common and plain version of english you know what i'm saying it's a bit rough around the edges just like the ancient times but that's not to say every brother is going to speak that way again you're going to have brothers that's going to that like to uh the brothers that are wordsmith you know they like to you know use different words um you know that have uh double meaning sometimes and um that 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 was common back then it's common now um and at the end of the day no matter the dialect you just have to as the scripture i'm about to read make it pretty much simple to understand so this is the book of habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 it says and the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables. Now, how are we writing the vision to make it plain upon tables today? Well, that's putting up um, videos, all right? That's the modern day version of writing and writing on tables because we're not writing out letters nowadays or dealing with clay tablets. What we have is the internet videos. 
and to make it plain is to make it easy to understand for those that are just coming in as the apostle has said you know feed them milk and um always remember that somebody's just coming in and you don't have to speak to them like a theolo uh, theological scholar some something that effect uh you know just something that jake would understand right um it says write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it and you're going to do two different things man all right when a heathen uh sees his judgment he's going to take off and run but if a brother of the um the, of the hopeful alexius he's going to take it and run with this truth um i want to back this up with another precept concerning this topic and this guy was making some good points in the video of why to study the kind of language because you know he was bringing out the fact that you know, just like the English language today, the Kino Greek had, you had certain words that had double meanings. Um, one of the examples they use is soda. Like, we know Ptolemy soda, which means savior. But so savior also back then meant, um, um, savior meant also a king who won a battle. Like, we accomplished it, you know. Uh, another example is a word that Yahweh Shah would use in the Greek, which meant save. And it not only meant to... Uh, save back then so it also meant to make whole you know um just like today you know save could be a, a company with salvation or save could be a company with saving somebody alive or save that seed for me you know there's different force behind these um <clears throat> languages and it's a uh, crucial that we go into the uh the modern uh, uh so going to the original text of it to get the proper understanding one of the examples they use in the above video is um if you go on a date and with a chick and she's from france and you're from english uh from from the united states and you speak into her in english and you have a translator between you there's certain things that's going to get lost in translation because there's not direct words in english that could necessarily translate into french and the same thing is true with the hebrew and the same thing is true with the greek so i mean you have to get into the hebrew and greek you know the brothers stress all the time now uh i think i, I didn't put the scripture but i know it's let's see uh I could use this one. I could use this one. First Corinthians 14 and 13. It says, Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret it. <clears throat> or the word that they have, glossa. G1100. It says, Tongue, a member of body of the speech, of an organ, a tongue, a language, or dialect. See, language or dialect. So, you know, first and foremost, if you break it down the videos in Spanish or you know, different language of the tribes, just make sure there's, you know, some form of interpretation. But I'm using it in the sense of that second definition right here, which is a dialect. You know what I'm saying? So um, anytime you see brothers um, use a, a larger range of vocabulary, you always got to um, remember that. Look, man, <laughs> hey, a lot of every Jake is into that stuff and you could just speak plain. And and when I was looking also up um, the Greek that Luke was, well, that Luke was, uh, writing in um they said that they said there's certain times he, he, he uh, structured the writing uh and what well, they they use semitic way or he hebraic way which meaning you know certain times he can fade it in a way that jake would understand and with a jake background of writing and then at certain times he'll just go classical greek and that's what you see um uh, brothers do today brothers might be trying to um hold back from using rude speech and and, and trying to bring out the word is is uh sometimes intellectual and then sometimes that street come out like you know so <laughs> there's nothing new under the sun you know what i'm saying but going back to the book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 um that's what primarily we do first and foremost is when we interpret these scriptures and we break them down you know it's, it's like you got to always remember that there's a babe and that no matter how you interpret it no matter what words you use what language you use <clears throat> make it clear uh so that all may understand what you're trying to bring out so that was a quick to the point <clears throat> i'm gonna give all praises to yahweh bashim yahweh shai bahashim rakak kodash the blondes of the apostles and the elders of great millstone which you well and salutations to the hopeful elect out there you akim tasadakim that do this thing in the utmost truth and sincerity uh shalom <clears throat>